I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we are taking a closer look at Superman number 11. Can Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne win back their father's respect? Well, let's hop on in together and find out for ourselves, shall we? So, in the fallout of the previous issue, the Super Sons, yeah, I know they technically get that name at the end of the issue, but I'm going to start calling them that now anyway, are traversing a snowy mountainside. It seems that Batman and Superman, after the horrible fight the two boys had in the genetics lab, decided to strip their children of their capes, and as such, their greater connection to the superhero culture. If they want them back, they're going to have to prove they can work together and solve a series of challenges that their two fathers have thought up for them. Of course, John and Damien just can't seem to see eye to eye on anything. Damien is overly serious and overly critical, while Jonathan is still learning the ropes at being a hero. We soon discover that Batman Batman and Superman actually reached out to some of Damien's compatriots for the challenges. The first one would be Nobody, aka Maya, who says that if they can take a map off her, then they'll get their way to the next challenge. Maya actually does pretty good bamboozling Superboy for a second, but Damien knows Nobody and her tricks, and because of it is quickly able to take the map. He doesn't share it with Superboy, he just runs off on his own. Superboy gets a fun little talk from Nobody, basically saying, yeah, I know he's a jerk, but hey, you gotta keep up with him, right? They're their next challenge brings these Super Sons to a train yard, but to get through there, they're going to have to get through Goliath, who's in a hunger rage right now. It's here in this challenge, John's ability to fly is absolutely invaluable. I like to, Damien further complains that Super Dad is probably watching them right now from afar. Pfft, what kind of father watches over their kids, right? The train ride ends up being a super short one, as once again, Superboy, Robin, and Goliath need to pull all their abilities together to make it out just in the nick of time. In fact, Alfred started feeling a little scared for the kids at a second there, like he didn't think they'd be able to make it out in time. While they still aren't friends or anything, Jonathan and Damien do finally discover something that they can both agree on, and that is the fact that they will never agree on anything. Their final challenge ends up being having to traverse a hurricane. Of course, both boys have two radically different ideas on how to best traverse the storm, and they just barely escape this one by the skin of their teeth. Superman says technically they passed the test, but they didn't work together and as such didn't learn a lesson, so they're going to have to talk about this more when they get back to the cave. As we soon discover though, the boys do manage to get another chance to prove themselves. You remember they spilled all those genetic samples in the previous issue? Yeah, well, turns out those samples belong to a bunch of famous Batman villains and they congeal together into a giant genetic monster, which the boys are managing to defeat, if only by pooling their skills together. Jonathan freezes it and Damien hits it. The two dads are actually shocked that they were saved by their kids like this, but Alfred, oh, he's not shocked at all. He always had faith in them. In fact, he is the one who gives them back their capes and the moniker of Super Sons. And hey, if you like that name so much, then be sure to pick up the actual Super Sons comic once that starts coming out. As the comic winds down, the Wayne and Kent family retire to Hamilton County for the Christmas season. The dads decide to go and pick out a Christmas tree, and the boys, it's their job to cut it down. But wouldn't you know it, they start fighting each other once again. <laughs> Superboy hitting a particular nerve with Robin by saying that he's short. Wah, wah. Superman number 11 was a satisfying conclusion to this two-part storyline. It's perhaps not as monumental as the first meeting of these two characters, but then again, hey, what could be? What I do like about this story is they didn't feel they needed to rush these two characters working together and being friends. Hell, it took Batman and Superman a long time to do it, so it's only right that their kids take their sweet time getting to know and understand each other too, right? I mean, especially for a character like Jonathan, who's new, who they want to keep around for a long time, you gotta give him places to go and places to grow, am I right? I think what I liked the most about this issue is that it wasn't afraid to be funny and tender at times. Overall, I'd give this one a very solid 8.5 out of 10, and I can't wait for Super Sons. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.